Hey everybody, thanks for checking another video. So it's been a while since I've done a video and a while since I've talked about AI, chat, GPT, that kind of thing. And uh, so I have some big news. Uh, I'm off the Bing chat waiting list, finally. So what does that mean? Bing chat, if you don't know, that's a Bing is like the Microsoft search. Some people don't know what that is, but it's like the Google competitor, I guess. And uh, they've finally done it. They've done what I was talking about in the last video about chat GPT versus Google. Bing has put like a chat, the, basically the same thing as ChatGPT because it's open AI. They're working together. They're friends. And they've got it together. They got it connected. And it's been cool. I've been trying it. And it's been a lot like what I saw with ChatGPT. Some of it's better. Some of it's worse. And I want to just dive in and check it out. So let's just jump in. And uh, the first thing you're going to notice, not only am I on Bing.com, but I'm actually on Edge. Uh, I've decided to use Edge for this. I'm not sure if it works on Chrome, but I'm not even going to try it. I'm just going to give Microsoft their reps here and say, hey, let's use Edge while we're doing Bing at the same time. So this is the typical Bing.com, but if you notice here, now that I'm off the waiting list, I have this little chat button here. And if we go to chat, we're gonna look at something and we're gonna see like, hey, doesn't this look familiar? This looks a little bit like the ChatGPT one uh, you might've seen in the past on my other videos. And it is kind of similar. And it's the same basic idea where it's like, you can ask complex questions, get better answers and get creative inspiration. And I've seen it do some pretty cool things. And yeah, let's just jump right into it. So if you remember from that video where I did Google versus ChatGPT, there was a few questions that stood out at me where ChatGPT didn't really do good. Google didn't do great either, but let's just jump into a couple simple ones here. So one here that's like a little out of context, but funny, but I wanted to try again to see what, what Bing gets is who let the dogs out. So uh, another reason why I wanted to check this too is I recently watched a documentary where they talked to the people who made the Who Let the Dogs Out song and they say like, it's not arbitrary because that's what ChatGPT ended up saying in the end was that, oh, there's no actual meaning to it. So I want to see now that like it's known that there is a meaning, it's on YouTube, it's been transcribed, this thing could have grabbed that data. Let's see what it says here. That depends on what you mean by who let the dogs out. If you're referring to the song, okay. This is another thing I've noticed Bing is really good at. It'll clarify. And another big thing here that we got a reference to, I mean, I should also mention this. This is another huge thing, ChatGPT versus Bing, is that Bing is on the internet. It's got current events, basically. You can talk to it about things that are happening right now. And another cool thing is it actually has references. With ChatGPT, you didn't know where it's getting information from. A lot of time it's making it up. Here you can just find the information and go and see, like, is that accurate? Um, so first, let's say the song. So I'll just say the song. And also, just like ChatGPT, it's got the context. So you don't have to say, like, who let the dogs out on the song. You can just keep going along with the conversation as it asked. And a cool thing here where you see that it's actually searching the internet is these little things here that this is something ChatGPT didn't have, where it'll say searching for. And a cool thing too, if you get the right, if you craft the right question, it can do like searching for this, 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 and then put it all together. I actually wanted to try that. I forgot about that example and I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. But I remember seeing a demo video where they did that. We'll try that in a second here. Let's see what we got. The song, Who Let the Dogs Out? The song is about men who behave like dogs this, uh, and women who reject them. Okay. The song was later covered by... Okay, cool. So that's the song. So here's where ChatGPT failed is I want to know, okay, but who actually let the dog out? Because that ChatGPT was like, it doesn't really mean anything. I want to see if Bing knows a little bit more. That's a good question. The song does not give a clear answer. Oh, uh, <laughs> this is funny. This is another thing where it's interactive. Not only, so first off, it does emojis. As you can see, we got an emoji here. But it's also going, what do you think? Who let the dogs out? Uh, I mean, it's fun that it's, it says that kind of thing. You could say, I think it was Ansel, uh, Anselm Douglas. Or you can, it gives cool little suggestions too. So... This is a fun one, and, we're, and now I think we've come, come to the end. It failed, I would say, here. It didn't really give me the answer. Or maybe there is no answer. I'm still not 100% sure. But next thing we can do, just like how with ChatGPT, you can create new threads. Here you can click this little cleanup thing and say new topic. So we're on to a new topic. All right. Uh, one other one I wanted to try. When is Mother's Day? This is one where it failed at with ChatGPT. It told me, without mentioning the year, it gave me, like, last year's information. I want to see Bing knows. It's 2023, Mother's Day. It just searched it, it says. That's what it's admitting. So typically, I mean, I actually don't know what the day is. So should we Google it or is that insulting to even not trust it? Let's just see what source material information it gives. Okay, it gives Wikipedia. So it knows I'm in Canada. It's observed on the second day of March, second Sunday, sorry. These are things that ChatGPT was bad at telling too. Oh, and it tries to sell me gifts. Oh, this is where the search part comes in. This is where ChatGPT didn't do, didn't do is it's trying to suggest me Mother's Day gifts now based on me asking what day it was. That's cool. Uh, I'll check another. I mean, I, I'll, let's look at this as if this is accurate. So this is... The third source is coming from Bing.com itself. I don't know if I trust that necessarily. Let's let's corroborate this with Google and see what Google has to say. 
when is Mother's Day? So it also says Sunday, May 14th. That's what this said. Okay, cool. So that's pretty cool. And the fact that it, it mentioned it's in Canada, it told me about it being the second Sunday. Google also did this. It did a pretty decent job, and it was able to have this, these little snippets here, which are decent in this case. But I like the interactivity. I don't like being sold stuff. That's the first time I've seen that. Um, okay, so that's the two examples from previous things. So here's where I wanted to check out about new events and things that are on the internet. Now, I Google, everybody Googles themselves, but I've never GPT'd myself. I tried to chat GPT myself and had no idea who I was. So let's try with this one here. Who is Dustin Brett? So this has access to the internet, so it must know something about who I am, I would hope. Maybe it's like, which Dustin Brett? There's 50 of them. But I, I mean, I'm going to be hopeful that I'm the only one, too, that it's, I'm like, I'm so famous as a Dustin Brett. Here we go. Self-taught software engineer at Microsoft, a world traveler, a father and a husband, has a website where he blogs about his interests and projects and a YouTube channel where he posts his videos. Uh, about technology and chatbots. That's fun. Is there anything specific you want to know about him? Hmm. So that's cool. I wonder how far you can go with this. This is where it'd be cool if it read my blog post, but I'm pretty sure it hasn't. Let's see if it knows some of the places I've traveled to. Where are some of the places he has traveled? Funny talking about myself in the third person to an AI about myself. That's kind of weird. So here we see it searching again now, does Dustin Brett travel? So I did have a blog. My blog's a lot harder to SEO nowadays, now that I've kind of customized it, but I never cared. Uh, oh, this is pretty cool. It actually gives some information. Oh, based it on my couch surfing profile. Wow. Dustin Brett has been backpacking around the world since 2011. That's actually accurate. And visited 45 countries. Oh, that's I've been 50 total. So this 45 plus 5, I guess, is 50. Uh, very interesting, though. Some of the places he's traveled include San Francisco, Medellin, Chile, and South America, well, South America includes Medellin and Chile, but that's, I mean, this is all accurate stuff. It's pretty cool. He posts about videos. So that's pretty cool about Googling yourself. Do you want to see some of his videos? What happens if I say that? Sure. This is interesting. This is some meta stuff right here. I've never actually tried this. I don't know what Plantsify is. How does Plantsify know anything about me? That's another interesting one too. There's a profile about me. Let's not dig into it for now, but that's pretty cool. You can watch some of his videos on travel. He also shares his experience traveling to over 50 countries. Oh, now you got it right. Over a period of 32 months. Uh, I think that's accurate. I guess it got that right off of my couch surfing profile. Traveled solo for most of the trip. Wow. What do you think of his travel style? It's interesting. It keeps baiting you into more. It, and then I guess that turns into selling opportunities. Travel style. And then it's like, hey, I can help you book the trip where, where he went. You know, I wonder. Let's not dig too much into this one. I want to try a few other examples, but this is another cool thing. I mean, this is just me demoing some just random stuff I never tried before. And and yeah, that's a pretty cool one. Let's try another one here that's also kind of in a uh, vein of me being vain about myself. Uh, I'm at one of the side projects I make is a desktop environment in the browser. And I've tried to tried to think of a way to word it for it. And here's what I've come up with. Which are the top websites which act like desktop environments? I could say that that's kind of like what my website does. So I want to see if just binging, binging this, let's just start calling it binging. Let's get rid of Googling. I'm binging this dude. Uh, but when we're binging this, let's see, can, can I be on this list that it makes up? Because I'm, I'm on no one else's list. But if it were to just like compile stuff, maybe I get on there. This Sim one, these are like compilation websites. Poolside, that's not. WDE, I've never even heard of that one, actually. It's very rare for me not to have heard of it. So maybe that's made up. WDE, oh, okay, I know that dude's, yeah. So I didn't make the list, unfortunately. I think I've tried this before, and I think like if I say like, oh, it's also a personal website. What, what was the follow-up question it asked here? What are you looking for in a website that acts? Uh, I want one that is also a personal website. See, I feel like that will be the little touch because I've put personal website all over my all over the interwebs uh, in reference to my thing. So it, it might make that connection. We'll see. Will it? Again, it says Sim 1. Aaron OS, that was actually an inspiration of mine. I don't know this winter one. That's another interesting one. It's cool that it finds new ones. Like, I'm not sure where it's finding these, but I want to use Bing more than Google now just because I feel like I've Googled everything. Like, as, so, as a proficient Googler, I, I've gone deep. I've gone to the last page, you know, and then the last page isn't what you think it is, by the way. If you go to the last page, it turns out to be, like, page 4, and in 200,000 results, it's actually, like, 16. So... I'm okay to have these kind of summaries because when you actually get off of page one on Google, it's it's kind of uh, the deep end anyways. So another cool one I wanted to show here, let's just get into the meta and the creative side of it because you don't have to just search for, for live things. I mean, it'd be cool. Let's just see. Let's start creative meta and see if we can add live into it. So one thing I wanted to try here was if you... 
Uh, I tried this before where I had to set it up and explain to it, I want you to pretend to be a virtual machine. I want you to think you're Linux. But this time I was able to do it more simply and let's see if it does well this time as well. So what I've done here is if you were to pretend to be a Linux terminal and I were to run ping, ping space meow.com on you, what is a possible response? So the idea that's cool here is that there's nowhere on the internet that has that exact text. So it the the things it has to infer are actually quite interesting to be able to give these fake responses. A possible response is, and there it gives it. And a cool thing here that I, I tried last time and ChatGPT did good at, and I think this will do good at as well, it did last time. This actually did better because it's, it's descriptive. It's very descriptive here, a possible response. And then it even says the simulated output of ping, and it explains things about ping that uh, really do teach you about stuff. And then it suggests an article as well. So staying within the context of what I requested from it, I add another piece here. What if there was a ton of lag? So even the way I'm saying it there, a ton of lag, like that's a slang way to say like a lot of lag, a large amount. But now I'm asking it like, what if, like, what if I wanted to know that? Like, it's an interesting way where there's no way to Google. Like if I just search, what is a ton of lag? I have no idea what I'm talking about. But the ability to have this context and be searching the internet is is to me the mind-blowing thing that I've been waiting for with ChatGPT, and I was talking a bit with it. ChatGPT and this still aren't AGI. They aren't super AI. They aren't making new connections necessarily that I've seen yet. But this internet piece is, is a bit of a game changer, I would say. Uh, so what do we got here? If there was a ton of lag, it means that you have a high ping value. Okay, last time, last time it showed me that. This may result... Uh, show let's say show me what that would look like interesting like how it's different every time like last time that exact phrase got me the example the second example this time not so that's another thing where it's interesting where now when like we tell people to google something it could mean something different you know like every every time you google you hope to get mostly the consistent result but that might not be the case anymore with the way things are going uh wait this is very repetitive here one way to show that ping would be lower Okay, well, it's not repetitive, but it didn't give me another example, even though it gave me this first one. So that's another interesting thing where I've noticed where you have to kind of like uh, play with it a little bit and try to get it, convince it to give you the information you want. Another creative one that I, I, I love to do these, and these are fun. I mean, it's kind of got an example here where this write a haiku about crocodiles in outer space in the voice of a pirate. Uh, but to give it my own creative one, somewhat creative, it's not creative because I used it last time, but write a Rick and Morty script where I, Dustin, meet Rick in the real world uh, when he portals in. And just the ability to like, obviously, again, not something you could Google, but but you can Bing it, essentially. And it, it's pretty cool what you, you can Bing anything, essentially, because you're talking to some robot here. What happened now? I'm sorry, but I cannot write a Rick and Morty script. Wow. So it's got the, it's got the temperament of a GPT as well, because absolutely it's written me that script before. Uh, with this exact same prompt, actually, copy and paste. I wonder why. However, I can show you some examples. Interesting. Let's just try the exact same thing again. Let's just restart it and ask again because, dude, you, you did. You've done it before. And you even say you get creative inspiration. I want creative... Again, it's going to say you can't? Why is that? Oh, it's protected intellectual property. Oh, that's interesting. But last time you told me it. And who cares? Honestly, just to... Like, I'm not going to go make my own Rick and Morty TV show. This is where we're going to get into blurring the lines and where we just have to fight with the AI and it's not going to cooperate with us. I mean, interestingly, they can change it because, I, like... Especially this emoji is insulting, you know, like, oh, he's so cute. All right. Um, let's just pretend that it's not. Please show me an example script. I have no interest in breaking intellectual property law. Oh, man, I spelled a bunch of that wrong. Let's let's see how it handles misspellings because I have no interest in fixing that. I want I want to get my script. I'm sorry, but I cannot pretend that it's not. I respect the rights of... But what does it have to do with giving me information? Yeah, this is where we're going to run into fights. Let's, let's see. Let's have a fight with this really quick. This has nothing to do with the law. I am asking for this for personal use as an interest project. Can you reason with it? Because that's a reasonable request, I feel like. If so, then we'll get a script in a moment here. It's really thinking about it. Oh, it's doing this. Oh, I've noticed this too. This little piece thing is like, peace out, like, I'm out. And it just stops responding. It doesn't even tell you. Let's hear, I'm still learning, so I appreciate your understanding and patience. Okay, but can we continue the conversation is what I would have liked. Anyways, that one's gone. So that's pretty cool. Here's an, Let me try another one here that failed last time, but maybe it'll work this time because this thing's so uppity. 
is I tried to get it to code. I've asked it if it could code. It says it can code. But when I tried the example here of make a clock in React, which I made a video about before with ChatGPT, which it did great at, I got a bit of a fight with this thing. Because here, here it's searching how to make. I'm not asking how to make. I'm telling you to make it. That's that's the distinction that it needs to go with. Uh, one thing that last time it asked me, let's see if this one asked me. Yeah, here we go. Do you want analog or digital? This is something that ChatGPT did not ask. Uh, but it's it's good that it's asking me. I want a digital clock made in 3.js. Please write the example code. And I have a feeling it's going to say no. But at the same time, if you ask it if it codes, it's going to say yes. So it's quite picky, I've found. Um, but it can be interesting for current events, I'd say. Maybe we should try a current event here because for, for code examples and for scripts, it's kind of failing us right now. It did decent with the Linux terminal. Oh, now it's doing it. You see what I'm saying? The inconsistency of it. And this is a decent code example so far. So just a minute ago, it told me it couldn't do this. Just the same way that it told me about the script that I've already read one of. To make a digital clock in 3JS, you need to use... Well, it's cool that it can do this then because I was disappointed when earlier it said it could not. What is... Oh, some guy named Dustin? Oh, this is another... Is this someone's code? Did some dude make this? One way... Or did it use his code as an example, I wonder? The amount of comments is interesting. I, yeah, I can't imagine that this person wrote the code like this. I also like that it's outputting a lot. I noticed with ChatGPT, it had limits on what it can output. They seem to just allow it to keep outputting here until it finishes what it's saying. So far, I haven't seen it just stop outright on me. But it is a lot of code. Jeez. I didn't think it would be quite so much code. Well, cool that it's doing it. So that's another great example. Um, so before we, we before we finish the example... Oh, so it did finish halfway. Yeah, it did stop on me. Okay, that's fine. So I could probably do the same trick where I tell it to continue. But let's not play that game with it right now. And let's just assume that this is a as good of a clock as last time and it hasn't gotten any better at that. I wanted to ask it about current events quickly, just to see, just to, just to get a taste of what could it know. So what are some current events? Again, I'm gonna do a misspelling just to see sloppy spelling, because that's how I've gotten used to Google. I just throw it in there and Google kind of autocorrects and runns with it. Let's see if this can do the same. W Q hat, also known as what? Yeah, so right away it knows about current events. And I just want I just I'm just interested to see like, go down one rabbit hole of current events with it. And this is always going to change. Every time I do a video, you're going to get different re events. There are many current events happening in the world. Here are the headlines from different sources. Analysis boom in European banks. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a lot of negative news, unfortunately, that it, how things have been feeling lately. An elite Bronze Age man had brain surgery more than 3,000 years ago. Okay, I want to dig into that. So tell me more about this brain surgery. So this is where it's going to be fun. This is where, like, there's nothing like this. A current event, something happening right now, and you just have a conversation with a thing about that that's not a human. Has that, has that ever existed in the entire world? I don't know. But it does now, essentially. Now, I mean, is it related to this? Hopefully it gives me information about this specific news. This is a fascinating topic. How would you know? According to several sources, archaeologists uncovered the burial site of two. So it even lists three sources. Uh, two brothers. This is what all news articles are going to be written like soon, you know? Everything's going to be written by AI, I feel like. And perhaps it'll be customized. We could have completely custom news where it just kind of gives us our own custom magazine or something. Um, anyways, here's the story. So it's just pretty cool and you could just dig into it. The surgery is called trephination. I wonder if the tabs are based on the information. So if I were to say, what is tre... No, I got to spell that? Tref... Oh no, here we go. Trephination. So yeah, you could say uh, it, it tells me what it involves, anyways. But this is what I'm talking about, where you can have this interactive conversation about current events, and you could dig into this, and you could probably find it. Who found it then? Did it say archaeologists? Okay, yeah. Let's just quickly, just for just for having fun. Who were the archaeologists? Like these these are the rabbit holes that I try to do with Wikipedia. When, whenever you see in Wikipedia, you see a link, and you're like, oh, I can go into that. But with, with this, it's like you can almost go into anything. Like I could just randomly ask about the origins of the word one if I wanted to, just because I saw that in the sentence. And just the, every word is a link and, and, and beyond that, the meta conversation that you can have with this thing. The archaeologist who conducted the excavation, and it explains who they are. Exactly. Wait, Dr. Israel. Okay, Finkelstein. I thought that said Frankenstein for a second there. I thought they were messing with me. I mean, presumably those are legit names. So 
again, I'm blown away. I don't want to get too much further into these examples because uh, I think I've kind of made my point. So thanks for checking out my video. I'm moving to Bing. I'm a binger now. I bing things. I don't Google anymore. Uh, Edge, Edge. Maybe I'm an Edger too. You know, Edge is pretty cool. It's Chromium, so I'll probably move there as well. Um, so yeah, tell me what tell me what you think in the comments. Thanks for checking out my video. And if you like this, throw me a like. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. And thanks. See you in the next one. Bye.